you are watching electrical engineering lectures channel for more videos please do like subscribe and hit the bell icon for the latest notifications welcome to another video in the previous video i have shown you how to read and write pic ep rom and in this video we will be talking about the timers and counters in the pic microcontrollers how they work what are the advantages of using the timers and counter in the microcontrollers over the delays micros and finally i'll be showing you how to calculate the timers and counters and afterwards in the next video i'll going to write the program and then simulate the program to show the working of timers so let us begin with the introduction of timers so basically the timer is a clock that controls an even sequence at a fixed amount of time the timers are used for the precise delay generation and also used to trigger an activity before and after a predetermined time and to measure the time elapsed between two consecutive events the timer inside a microcontroller is a free running binary counter the counter increments for each pulse applied to it the counter counts continuously from 0 to 2 raised to power n minus 1 where n is the number of bits the timer has normally the microcontroller has either 8 bit timer or 16 bit timer so if we are talking about 8 bit timers then the timer will count from 0 to 255 and then it rolls over and then start counting from zero again now we'll talk about the counters what is the main difference between the timers and the counters the timer takes the internal clock as a reference clock while the counter counts external clocks or pulses applied through port pin in other words we can also say that the timers are the timers are also the counters because they are used to count external events the timers are mainly used for counting or measuring external event so let us explain one example how the counters work we have a system which is used to measure the rpm of this rotating wheel we have a small magnet that is attached to this rotating wheel and we have a magnetic sensor so whenever a small magnet pass in front of this magnetic sensor the output of this sensor will become high and the pic microcontroller it will sense this output using the counter and the counter increments each time whenever the output of magnetic sensors get high so as the wheel rotates and the magnet passes in front of the magnetic sensor each time the microcontroller counter will increments and it will increment by value of 1 so this is how the rpm will be calculated using the external input now i'll explain the difference between delays micros and the timers and why we prefer timers over delay micros as you know that the timers are one of the most important workhouses of an embedded programmer and every application that we design will somehow involve a timing application therefore we want our cpu to be efficient and to be less used whenever we want a time event whereas a delay micro is called a dump delay because during the execution of delay function the microcontroller sits dump by just creating a delay during this process the microcontroller cannot listen to its other input or output ports for example if it is reading an analog value it cannot listen to its analog values while it is sitting in the delay macro and since it is not advisable to use delay functions except for the application where we need to insert the delay intentionally we will always prefer the timers so let us talk about some of the shortcomings of delay macros the value of the delay must be constant for the delays macros it cannot be changed during the program execution hence it remains is programmer defined the another disadvantage of 
using the delay macros is that the delay will not be accurate as compared to the timers. And the last disadvantage is that the larger values of delays cannot be created using macros. Example, a delay of half hour cannot be created by delay macro. The maximum delay that can be used is based on the crystal oscillator use. So this is the block diagram of the timer. So here we have to select the clock because the clock timer will depend on the external clock frequency. So if we use is as the timer, then the external clock frequency will be the input of this clock source. And if it will be, it will be used as the counter, then the external pulses will be used as the frequency source. After that, a train of pulses is created, which will be then input to a prescaler block. So what is the purpose of using prescaler? A prescaler is a configurable clock divider circuit. It can be used to divide the clock frequency input to the timer module. So if we divide the clock frequency in time, it will increase the time because the time is reciprocal of the frequency. For example, if the instruction clock is 5 MHz and we use a prescaler of 2 to divide it, which effectively makes the clock frequency equals to 2.5 MHz. So each counting time will increase from 0.2 microseconds to 0.4 microseconds. So you see that when we divide the clock frequency, the time to count or the tick time will increase. So here you see that this is the time of a clock pulse. As we divide through the prescaler, the time will increase and this will input to the time timer disable. So if the timer disable is off, then it will go into the block of timer count. So you see that on each time pulse, the count will increment by value of 1. So after for 8 bit timer, after 255 clock pulses, the timer will count to its maximum value which is 255 or double F in hex value. So after that, what will happen? The counter will overflow and it will start counting from 0. I am talking about the 8 bit counter. So after counting to 255, it will again start counting from 0 and this will cause the counter to overflow. So what is overflow? Overflow means the counter reach its maximum output and again roll over to 0. The microcontroller has an overflow flag to indicate the overflow of the counter and gen generates the overflow interrupts. This gives an additional option to count the number of times the counter overflowed and it extends the range of the counter. For example, if we need to count up to 512, we can use the 8-bit timer and overflow flag. After two overflows, the count must be equal to 512, which is sum of 256 plus 256. So this is how we can use the interrupt routine to perform different functions and to include the timer sequence between the events. So this is very important, the timer interrupt. Since I am talking about specifically the PIC 16FA77A timer, so this microcontroller has three independent timers, which are timer 0, timer 1 and timer 2. The timer 0 and timer 2 are the 8 bits timer, whereas the timer 1 is 16 bit timer. So if you can see that, if you don't use any prescaler, then the minimum delay you can have is 0.2 microsecond in all of the cases. Whereas if you use the maximum prescaler, which is 256, then you can get the maximum delay of 13.107 millisecond for each count. 
and since for 16 bit timer the prescaler will be 65532 in that case you can have a maximum delay of 104.8 millisecond for each count so these timers can be used as timers or counters or can be used to generate the PWM so what is the formula for calculating the count increment so here it is again I am taking the 8 bit timer example so first of all for the count increment of timer since the timer takes the internal clock as reference clock therefore the internal clock will always be equal to the external clock divided by 4 so here you can see that since I am talking about the time therefore it is the inverse of f oscillator divided by 4 which can be written as 4 over f oscillator so this is the internal clock frequency after that we have a prescaler and then it is it will be multiplied by 256 minus count so what does what does it mean by this the equation written in within the parenthesis this is the maximum value of the count we'll get for 8 bit timer which is 256 minus count count will be the initial value from where the counter will start increment so most of the cases will initialize the timer by value of 0 so that it will start counting from 0 but for certain cases for certain timings you can have an initial value of count between 0 to 255 so if your count is other than 0 then you have to insert the value of count here and this will the whole factor will be multiplied will be divided by f oscillator which is the external frequency of the oscillator and if you are using the counter mode then what will happen only the factor of 4 will be removed and the whole formula will remain the same for the 8 bit timer these are the prescaler values which can be used in the microcontrollers these are 2 4 8 16 32 64 128 and 256 this means that your clock frequency will be divided by this scalar values so let us take an example again for an 8 bit timer the clock frequency which is an external oscillator is 20 megahertz and if the prescaler value is 256 and the initial count is 0 then the timer will overflow after 13.1 millisecond or you can say that it will take 13.1 millisecond to count from 0 to its maximum value which is 255 so what will happen after this time an interrupt will be generated if you enable the interrupt in the program the program will execute the interrupt routine after 13.1 millisecond so if you want to reduce the delay what you will going to do you will going to use a low value of the prescaler in my case I have used 128 so if you are using 128 then the timer will overflow 6.5 milliseconds so depending upon your application you can select the prescaler and then select the number of uh, the overtimes after which your event will be executed so this is all from the concepts of timers and counters in the PIC microcontroller in the next video I will going to write a program in which I will show you the function of stopwatch by using the internal timers and then simulate the whole function in the Proteus so stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe our channel thank you for watching